Thank you for being part of the Oakwood Free Will Baptist Church Ministries. Our prayer is that those who listen to the Word of God will find a greater revelation of God's purpose in their lives. For additional resources, please visit us on the web at www.oakwoodfwb.com. Today, may you be encouraged, strengthened, and refreshed by our message. Thank you, Jeffy, for being here. Uh, I'm just here to fill in the spot for Brother Blaine or someone else that he might ask to hold the service. I'm certainly not Brother Blaine. I've, uh, throughout my ministry, my early ministry uh, especially, I uh, helped Billy Graham in high regard. And I thought, what would it be like to be him, you know? But I uh, come to the conclusion that I wasn't Billy Graham. And I never was going to be Billy Graham. And God didn't make me Billy Graham. So we are what we are. And uh, no matter what God calls us to do, we need to be faithful in doing just that. If you uh, have your Bibles tonight, I, I used to know a preacher that used to say, if you have your Bibles tonight, or if you don't, Sell everything that you got and buy you one. And uh, that, that, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. He died in the pulpit. You know, remember him? Brother Clyde Hudson. So some of you might, might remember him. But he was a, a really good evangelist and uh, I loved him a lot. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Colossians, chapter 3. We want to uh, spend a, a little bit of time tonight talking about what our Christian lives ought to be like. Uh, Paul, as he wrote to the Colossians, uh, many of them were young converts in a sinful place, and he wanted uh, them to be set aside for the Lord. He wanted the uh, people in Colossae to know when they met one of the Christians by the way that they lived. And folks, in reality, uh, people ought to know us by the way that we live. They ought to know that, that we're a Christian by the way that we live. If we're not sharing that kind of testimony, then uh, better check ourselves. But better look at, at, at the way we're living because it's possible that we, we might not be in God's will. Okay. In the book of, of Colossians chapter 3, let us begin reading. And we'll mainly... Uh, do our speaking from uh, about uh, verse uh, 8 on, on through, but I want to read uh, uh, the first verses also to kind of give us uh, a lead into what Paul is saying. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, for Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. 
set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify or put to death, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate of affections, evil concoctions, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deed, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. For is, for there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, bar barbarian or Scythian, bond or free. But Christ is all and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man hath a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of the Lord dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Let's pray. My Heavenly Father, we come to you as humbly as we know how. Lord, our hearts are burdened for Marty, who we've known all our lives. We pray, Father, that this problem that he is having wouldn't be of a seer's nature. 
We ask you, God, to bless Brother Straw the many others that were mentioned. And Lord, I, I can't remember them all, but we just ask that you would undertake and bless them in a special way. Thank you, Father, for each one that's here tonight. Thank you for your word. And we pray, Lord, as we administer to those who are before us that the Holy Spirit would have the leading hand. God bless us now, we pray. For it's in Christ's name we ask. Amen. Amen. Okay, as, as we look back, uh, as we said, we want to think about the, what we're going to say as uh, Christian stewardship. Uh, and, you know, I've known some of you for a long time, Brother Mike and uh, so, some others uh, for a lesser time, but uh, for all of that time, we as brothers and sisters in Christ have the obligation to grow in our Christian relationship. Be kind one to another, the Bible said. Now, as we look back over what we have read, uh, we'll just begin with uh, verse 8. Paul is in this verse contrasting the old Adam with the new. Now, he did this in, in a lot of other places when he said to take off the old man and put on the new. And uh, what he's getting at is that becoming a Christian is a complete change. You uh, occasionally run across someone who uh, maybe is a young Christian and maybe they don't have their feet on the ground yet. Maybe they're still dabbling in sin a little bit. Well, that's not God's plan for them. They, they need to turn over that, that new leaf become that new creature in Christ as uh, Paul is trying to convey to the people in Colossae. Uh, at the time of Paul's writings, Colossae was a, uh, a place of pretty good wealth. They, not as rich as some places, but they, they had pretty good wealth. And uh, you know, as most of the time, wealth brings on sin. And so it was a sinful place. And uh, they were having trouble with uh, the, the Christians not setting themselves apart. And this was uh, God's command, and, and, and Paul's command is that they were to put off the old man and become new. As he began to uh, uh, give some, some instructions here, he uh, said, but now you also put off all these, anger. That's a hard one to begin with, then. Put off anger. Uh, you know, I, I can't even count the number of years now that I've been, been a Christian, and sometimes I still haven't conquered that command uh, to, to put off anger. 
uh, it, it's a natural thing, and if, if we're not careful, as the old saying goes, it'll jump up and bite us. It, it, it surely will. And then he says, put off wrath. Malice, blasphemy, filthy communication, and working on the job most of my working days. Occasionally I would run across an individual, they knowing that I was a preacher. And they would tell me what a good Christian they was. Well, I didn't know their, their lives, and I didn't know whether they were a Christian or not. All I had was what they told me. But it wouldn't be long until I'd walk into a conversation that was going on, and all the filthy talk in the world would be coming out of their mouth. Now, uh, immediately, it made me believe that that individual didn't serve the same Christ that I do. Because when I become a Christian, I put, I put the filth and talk down. I never had much problem with, uh, with, with dirty words, so to speak. Uh, my mom and dad uh, tried to teach us right and uh, to use God's name in vain, just you better not do it. Or you can come and get your, you know what, wings. And uh, so we, we were raised that way. And uh, it should be today that when we claim the name of Christ, that we put off that kind of thing. <clears throat> Line up one to another. Ooh, that's a biggie too. Line up one to another. <clears throat> <clears throat> Now, Paul is not talking in general. <clears throat> He's talking to uh, what's supposed to be Christians. And he ought not have to say this. He ought, you ought not have to tell a Christian that uh, you, you, you shouldn't be lying. Especially to another Christian. We need to be very careful of what we say and what we do because we are Christian and we don't want uh, uh, someone coming back and saying, well, I saw old Maxie the other day and he was coming out of the liquor store with a bottle of liquor. Or he, we saw him in a movie that was, uh, I don't know how they rate them now, but bad. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we shouldn't be guilty of those sorts of things. Put off the old man with his deeds. <coughs> and now put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. In other words, after the image of God. That's, that's what we're to be striving for in this life. Verse 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, or barren or Scythian. Now, <coughs> Scythian was a uh, uh, country nearby and uh, the people of Cynthia 
many of them had come to Christ. And Paul made the reference to them uh, in saying that uh, where there is neither Greek nor Jew nor circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian or Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. So <clears throat> when we, we look at, at what Paul is trying to get across, even those who uh, are Christians, uh, need to be careful uh, about how they're living their lives, whether they're you or a circumcised or uncircumcised uh, or a Christian. Uh, they still need to, to, to uh, take care of uh, what they do. Put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved, vows of mercy. That's uh, kind of uh, an unusual word as, as in our language today. But what it means is our innards, vows of mercy, kindness, humbleness, of mind, meekness, and long suffering. You know, <clears throat> we were just in our prayer request talking about uh, Brother Straw and uh, others that uh, have died uh, recently. You know, in the beginning, after a death, uh, the uh, relative of the person that has died will just have a lot of company, a lot of phone calls. But then you wait a month or two months, and it's hard to find anybody that's thinking about them. Well, that's not the way it's supposed to be either. As, as we mentioned, uh, Brother Straw is, is not uh, doing all that well right now because, uh, you know, his problem is, is just now really hitting. And so we don't need to let up on our prayers, continue to pray for him. That God will will be now. For bearing one another. That's what uh, what we're talking about. We need to forbear. Continue to lift up uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ. I think that, that's a, a real test of a Christian is how that they react in time of need. You know, it, it doesn't matter what the need is, if it's physical or fi financial or, or whatever it is, uh, we, we, we need to, to, to be trying to forbear and do what we're supposed to do. And then he, he says, uh, forgive him. That's kind of hard too. Imperfection. All of us are familiar with that. All of us are challenged daily because our lives are imperfect. It's hard to find someone who's perfect in Hell has just never been one except that of Jesus Christ. 
so that as we go along, verse 14, so, uh, you know, the love chapter is one of the best chapters in, in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, it's surely put there for a reason. And as Christians, we need to apply it daily. The next verse, the peace of Christ. That verse of scripture in Philippians that tells us that the peace of Christ surpasses all understanding. And we don't, uh, I, I probably myself don't understand that to the fullest. I think you really have to go through uh, a difficult time in order for that to really reg register with the peace of Christ. The Christian church came as a singing church. I like good singing. I think that uh, a church is singing is one of the greatest blessings of the church. It sets the tone for uh, the preaching service that's to follow. And it, it's hard for me to uh, to understand why churches don't put forth a greater effort to have a good singing. Uh, uh, you have a, a wonderful song leader here and, and good singing, but in many churches it, it's not like that. And uh, we, we can be blessed by the songs and the hymns and the spiritual song. Do everything in the name of the Lord. Again, Paul is trying to <clears throat> persuade the people that they need to let their light shine. They need uh, uh, to uh, do everything in the name of the Lord. Let people know that uh, they are, are a Christian and that uh, they have something special in their lives. Christianity is a positive religion. There's uh, nothing unpositive about uh, I've asked people from time to time if they were a Christian. And they would say, well, I don't know. Well, you better know. You better know if, if you're a child of God or not. And if you don't know, then you need to put forth every effort that you can to know that uh, you are a Christian. John Wesley, the famous preacher, as a youth, had little to commend him to his superiors. And probably none of them would have chosen him 
as the clergyman who would save England from the revolution. So, like I said from the beginning, I'm not a Billy Graham. Uh, I uh, can't be, won't be, but I'm what I am. And God uses small people. You know, he seldom ever uses anyone that's not a small person. I'm not talking about in stature. I'm talking about in, in fame. Because uh, when you become famous, uh, when you become uh, that dignitary, probably God can't use you anymore. So God chooses the, the, the lowest uh, to do the highest work for Him. Only a few of God's chosen have come from among the great. Almost all of them come from the ranks of the unknown. D.L. Moody, as a shoe clerk, once said that he was determined to see how much God could accomplish through a man who is entirely devoted to the Lord. And there is no end. There is no ceiling on that man who will allow God to use it. Christian doctor. But certainly, it is not the soul such experience. Over and over, the apostle exhorts Christians to love one another. He who does not love the brother does not have within him the love of Christ. Characteristics of the Christian which most impressed the pagan world was the way they seemed to love one another. People just know it when they come in the church and they see the love and affection that the church people have one for another. This is the spiritual growth that God wants us to have. I pray that some way, somehow, through the Word of God tonight, that it has touched your heart, soul, and all of us can be a better Christian. Everyone. No matter how good you are, <clears throat> you can be better. Not that God requires us to work, but if we're Christian, we will work, as James said. So as we come to a close tonight, Pray for the camp. I believe Brother Glenn said they had 90 something there this week. And that's a lot of kids. But pray for Brother Glenn as he is directed and all of those who are uh, working with him. God bless you. It's our prayer. 
Let us be dismissed now. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, your love, and your mercy. Thankful Father for your word that teaches us and guides us and helps us to be a better Christian. I thank you, Lord, for Oakwood Church. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would bless the leader of the plane. Even the, to the youngest Christian, we ask your blessing, Lord. Watch over now and care for us. Again, we pray for those who are sick. And we humbly ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. No, no. Con- 